$5,000 for pain and suffering. <laughs> All right. That's a clip from the Judge Alex show, one of several TV shows that deal with legal disputes quickly. Judge Alex is Alex Ferrer. He's a professional arbitrator. Alex, the arbitrations that you do and uh, did on TV occur outside government's court system. But the Constitution says that the courts are a job for government. Well, generally that is true, but people have a right to contract away their constitutional rights. They have a right to contract whatever they'd like as long as it's legal. And that's what arbitration is, is it's private judging that's entered into as a result of a contract between the parties. Now, my show was arbitration, but that's not your typical arbitration. That was arbitration in entertainment field. Uh, arbitration is done all the time between companies and individuals, between companies and other corporations uh, that don't want to be in the typical courtroom. These people People, these arbitration firms are for profit. You're trying to make money. Uh, people don't like that. And yet, it seems to make you work more quickly. Consumer claims in arbitration took four months on average. In court, 19 months. One of the benefits is it is speedier um, because you don't have the backlog that you have in a typical court system. And because it's speedier, it also usually is cheaper. A lot of times litigation costs are, are astronomical because it drags on for so long and there are depositions taken over and over and there are subpoenas that are served and discovery and uh, a lot of research that goes into it. Some of it absolutely necessary. Some of it just, unfortunately, lawyers doing everything they can to make sure they collect a paycheck. Well, why don't with they arbitration, do that it goes in, a lot quicker. Why don't they do it in, ar in arbitration if they can get away with it in government courts? Well, it kind of takes away the incentive of people bringing you a case in arbitration. I mean, one of the points is that it is quicker, that it is less costly. So it works well when you have two equal parties, say two businesses fighting, but if you have a big company against consumers, not so well. I, yes, I would say that that is the, the optimal situation when two corporations or companies that are equally powered um, can make a decision, a voluntary decision to go into arbitration as opposed to court. The other bad side is every, every time you sign a contract with like your cell phone carrier, your stockbroker, consumer never reads the fine print. And in that fine print, they bury an arbitration clause that takes away your right to a jury, um, takes away your right to appeal. So you're stuck with the outcome and the arbitrator you get get makes all the difference in the world. I mean, I personally, I think I'm a great arbitrator, but if you get one that is looking at it from the standpoint of, you know what, I'm going to get a lot of cases from AT&T, but I'm not going to get any other cases from John Stossel. This is his only case. He may tilt his verdict on behalf of the hand that's feeding him. But if they're relatively equal, there's another danger. What if, what if you're running a sleazy arbitration firm? You're taking bribes or you're not efficient. That's a possibility in court as well. I mean, you could have judges that are sleazy and corrupt. Uh, we can't eliminate all of the ills. But if, if you, if I think in, in order to make it as fair as possible, I would love to see them get rid of arbitration clauses that come up are mandatory before you ever have a dispute. The typical ones that are in those contracts that you sign without necessarily reading or certainly without knowing what rights you're giving up or what dispute you're gonna have down the road. Once you have a dispute, if you voluntarily choose to go to arbitration, if you and the other party say, you know what, let's avoid the court system, let's make this faster and cheaper, then you know, all power to you. There's a market incentive for you to run your firm well, right? If you're taking bribes, people, the word will get out and people won't choose you for arbitration. In the open market, I think generally it's true. If people have the ability to pick their arbitrators where it's not being shoved down your throat, then the arbitrators that are fair and honest and do well uh, will thrive and will continue to do well because they will continue to be hired by, uh, by people in the open market. But when you're, the still, market when you're dealing with... The well that way with government if they do a bad job. They just keep doing it. Sure. Thank you, Judge Alex.